Okay. And then if you can enlarge the screen, I don't want to see any comments. Okay. Cool. We're live? I think so. Hey, hey, hey. Thanks, Aaron. So, here we are again. Been a fun week. Hope some of you guys have had fun uh, watching my last live video. And like I said, you would do. Many of you mocked it and made fun. And um, I think it's funny because you fell right into my trap. Because the work I do is exposing energy, people's true energy. So I don't give a fuck what you think of me. And those of you who are Mormon or otherwise Christian or religious or whatever you want to call yourselves, who decide to try to call me to repentance for my swearing, like I said, I don't give a fuck because it's not your place to tell me how to talk or to judge me or anyone else on this planet, which is exactly one of the reasons I have sworn like I have. It also helps clear energy when you state your true emotions and feelings. So having said that, <clears throat> Something I do care about is exposing darkness, which is why I'm going to do the free Zoom session on Friday, July 9th at 6 p.m. I'm going to talk about my excommunication from the LDS church and at least some of what really happened to me since uh, many of you would like to spread lies and rumors and, you know, whatever else. You're going to keep doing that, but at least for the truth seekers who would really like to know, I'm going to, I'm going to talk a little bit about that and really clear my own energy on it because I still am very angry at the abuse that I suffered and that I continue to see and hear about other people suffering in the ex-Mormon community. We'll also talk about some of the true history of the LDS church and how this corrupt cult has tainted the reputation of both Hiram and Joseph Smith and other early members of the church who were innocent and um, in trying to cover up their tracks and justify their own polygamy and adultery and murderous acts, they have created false histories and records and modified records, including journal entries of Joseph Smith and others. So that's just a taste of what's coming on July 9th. Uh, anyway, everybody has to register for that individually. That means if you want on to that free Zoom, because nothing's free, right? Somebody has to pay for that which that somebody is me. So here are my rules. There is to be no recording, even though I know many of you will. Legally, I am telling you there's to be no recording, just like those that recorded me in my classes on video and audio in Salt Lake. Let me make it very clear. You are not to record this. This is copyrighted material. Every live that I do goes public. All my private Zooms and my private classes are copyrighted material. So here are the rules. You must show your face, meaning you must be on video where we can see you. No sunglasses. No hats that cover your eyes. Baseball hats are fine as long as we can see you. Lights must be on in the room you're in or if you're in the car. We have to be able to see your face. There's no hiding. One person 
per registration. If you want to come as a group or as couples, you must each individually register. No more than two people may share a device. So if you're like a married couple or a dating couple, you can share a device or a mother, daughter, or sisters or whatever. But you must individually each register or you will be kicked off the call. Any infractions on these rules, you will be automatically booted off. You may only register once under your name. We have about 16 people who have duplicate registrations for whatever reason, and we're going to be deleting those duplicates. Registration is by noon on Friday, July 9th. The Zoom invite will go out shortly after noon, sometime between noon and 4. You'll get an email with the invite. Hmm, let's see. I don't know, I think that about covers it. If I'm forgetting something, if if part of my staff could email me and let me know if there's something else that we discussed related to July 9th, if you can let me know and I'll announce that on the slide. So I've um so it's kind of like old school for me now, the harassment and the mocking and the name calling. And I just gotta say, you guys are not original, those of you that are my haters. Some of you that are new to the scene, you think you're so clever. I went public in May of 2014, and prior to that, I had a lifetime of preparation to go public with my story, knowing what was going to happen to me. So if you guys don't think I knew that, then you're the idiots, not me. Because it would take an idiot not to know what they were going to be in for on a persecution level being called every name in the book. So having said that, it doesn't, it doesn't even faze me. I mean, I bring it up here to point out your insecurities or jealousies or other negative energies you have that you're exposing of your own and thereby exposing my area where I can strengthen myself. So I actually thank you because it lets me know where I still have energy to clear myself and it lets the true people that are really wanting to know truth and, and know how to discern a true messenger, it lets them know and feel the contrasting energy. So thanks to the haters, to the opposition, to the name callers, whatever you guys want to call yourselves. Um, wherever you are, Mormon, non-Mormon, religious, non-religious, anybody that decides they want to name call me, you just expose yourself because I speak the truth and the more truth I speak, the more opposition I get. And that propels me forward. It's not going to shut me up. And um, all you're doing is helping me ascend, helping me release dark energy that's been trapped in my system from other people's energy clinging to me or from past probation, past, past lives, um, or stuff premortally in this foreign heaven or, or weapons that they throw at me. All that does is help me identify what needs to still be released from my own system. And then that raises my energy vibration. See how it works? And if you don't see how it works, well, then you're really blocked and really confused and really in the dark. And we can help you with that. I do not seek ill for anyone on this planet or in this galaxy or universe. When I speak, I will be speaking very openly, knowing, like I did last week, that you will mock me. But my audience that I see is much larger than the mere mortals that are on this planet. And when I say mere, I don't mean like you're less than me because I've had people close to me use that verbiage who I'm sure will hear and watch this video. I have never thought of myself as greater than or better than any human being 
or any species. Quite the opposite. What I mean by mere mortal is that we are blinded, all of us. We have veils. We have curtains. We have other blocks between our conscious mind and our subconscious system. I just happen to have fewer of those because of my circumstances and what I've been through. But I guarantee you I have an M earning my stripes. I have memories, lots of them. I had them when I came to the planet all throughout my childhood. And all that has happened with my near-death experiences and things changing in the universe with everything from moons to the eclipses, like it all affects our systems. So I have memories. If you've not seen the trailer for the movie Infinite that's coming out, that might give you a clue as to what is going on on this planet. Of course, that's the version the Luciferians want to tell because they have their infinites and the light side has theirs. The contrasting energies of light and dark are real. Not in the way Chad Daybell says it. I don't believe any of his shit. Other than that reincarnation or past lives is true. And many of you know that because you have your own deja vus or your own memories, your own visions, your own spiritual gifts. And it's to you that I speak. Those of you that know I speak truth because of your own gifts. For the rest of them, let them be. Do not try to talk them in to believing you, what you see or what you hear or what you experience. But also don't let them talk you into thinking you are crazy because you are not. Even mental illness like schizophrenia, even with that, they truly are hearing and seeing different dimensions. They're just seeing dark dimensions, which is traumatizing and scary. They really are hearing voices. They're just not hearing light voices most of the time, which is scary. It's scary for everyone involved because it is unknown and misunderstood. So I've learned by several sources <laughs> that I'm crazy. But those of you who are typing this on the internet or sending me emails or whatever, to quote Jeff Rowe, my ex-husband, tell me something I don't know. See, Lucifer has been trying to tell me from my earliest memories of cognitive ability at the age of three that I could, could put together thought processes enough to understand and see and understand a little of the basics of the light and dark angels that I was seeing or the light and dark voices that I was hearing. He told me my entire life, and he still tries to tell me, right along with all his minions, that if I were to tell people what I really see or what I really hear, they will just call me crazy. They won't believe me. They'll want to lock me up and a whole rigmarole of onslaught of other shit that he tries to shove down my throat. And when I mean shove down my throat, I mean affect the throat chakra where you can't talk because they're choking you or they've stuffed something down your throat to keep you from speaking out. So those of you that have experienced that know what I'm talking about. And every single time, now sometimes it takes longer than others, but every single time Christ comes, he sends in his messengers, he sends in his healers, he sends in his uh, guardian angels, his bodyguards. Every, there's, there's people that have assignments on the other side of the veil that work for both the light and the dark forces. 
And I guarantee you that every single time they have come to my rescue, when I have learned what I need to learn to advance like I wanted to advance premortally. And the same can be for you. So, so what if you lose people close to you? If they don't accept you for who you are? So what if people say shit about you? Why do you care what they think? So what if people at church or in your family or your neighborhood or community or your work don't believe you? Don't waste your breath. Putting your good energy after bad energy is not, not productive. I will continue to speak out in hopes of reaching those who already know and feel it in their heart what I speak is true. And to those who cannot feel, who are past feeling to whatever degree, whether they claim themselves as Christians or not, or any other religious affiliation that claims to have a higher knowledge and a higher power working on their behalf. If you cannot recognize me as a true messenger, you do not recognize your God because I work on behalf of them. I say it boldly, confidently, and 100% truthfully. I make no qualms. I make no apologies. Not that I'm not an imperfect person. I'm not talking about not apologizing for being imperfect. <laughs> I'm not like the LDS church. I think, you know, like Oaks who says they make no apologies. That's bullshit. That's Luciferian. Any man or woman or person or organization that claims they make no apologies has an ego and pride issue. I will apologize for everything I ever consciously know I do wrong every single time. I make a lot of mistakes. What I will not apologize for is my mission that I know or my identity that I know or what I've been asked to do that I know or that I know I work on behalf of Elohim, the gods and goddesses as one of their true messengers. For that, you will never hear me apologize. But I will apologize for my human weakness and I have a lot of them. Some mistake my confidence for pride. Judge me as you will. I never said I didn't have pride. But many mistake the confidence for ego and pride. And that is you judging my heart, which you do not know if that is what you claim. Because what I know is my heart has pure intent, no ulterior motive other than to help and to warn and to do as I've been asked to do by Elohim. <sighs> Sometimes it's like people just have to sit with certain energies process was just been said. Could it be that Julie Rowe is speaking truth? Could it be that she really does know? Could it be that higher beings are actually communicating with her, that they actually have given her an assignment? Could it be that war will really come to America and the rest of the world? Could it be that Revelations 12 is beginning to unfold. Could it be? Well, I will tell you one of the reasons I was selected and chosen 
to, to play this role, the role that I know and that only a few of my closest friends have any inkling of, but very few, and there is no other person on this planet in mortal body that knows who I am, what I am, and what I will accomplish in this life on behalf of Elohim and all of mankind, in fact, every species. I have been called upon to do a mission and I will see it through. And those who are in different dimensions, those in the higher dimensions who are watching, who are hearing me, know this to be true. Many of them have seen the future like I have. Those in lower dimensions are placing their bets against me and the rest of this plan that Elohim has designed to overtake the Luciferians. We will accomplish this. Armageddon will happen in my lifetime, and I will be there to help kick their asses. I have memories of living in Asia, Middle East, Persia, Atlantis, Minos, the Minoan, M-I-N-O-A-N. Anybody heard of it? If you don't know what that is, you can Google that. I have memory. The days of Esther, the days of Christ, the days of King Arthur, the days of early pioneers coming on the Mayflower, the days of Martin's Cove dying as a small child at the age of six, frozen and starving. I have memories of being Native American anciently in North America, Canada, America, United States, Central and South America, anciently. I have memories. I had some of these before my near-death experience, and since then I've had several near-death experiences and out-of-bodies, astral projecting and communications from beyond the veil. There is no convincing me otherwise. I know I'm not crazy. I know I have memories. We need powerful men and women on this planet and elsewhere who are willing to work for the Lord's sake, for Elohim, for the light, for the universal good, for the betterment of everyone. Not for the one, not for the One World Order, United Order, United Kingdom, United Nations. That's bullshit. That's run by Lucifer. And not just Lucifer, but the Satans that came before him that recruited him, that I also have memory of. I have memory of the Elohim Wars. I can see the wars going on in spirit realm even as we speak. I have memories of inner earth, middle earth. Artemis, Ishtar, Anana. I have memories. Satanic ritual that has been on this planet for eons and eons. It will continue on throughout the millennium until there is a final battle to which they will truly get their asses kicked. Because unlike some of you who have been brainwashed into thinking that a righteous man or woman cannot and should not swear, let alone show any kind of violence. That is exactly what Lucifer would like you to believe. So that you just bow down while he kicks your ass. While he shames you and guilts you and makes you think that to be Christian and Christ-like means to be a wuss. Just like the Catholics and the Mormons have tried to portray Christ with this, the blasphemy of saying, turn the other cheek. Yes, we turn the other cheek, but that does not mean we take the abuse. Christ accomplished his mission. He took that abuse because it was part of his mission to take it so that he could be sacrificed for atonement. I take some of my, my mine as well so that I can fulfill my mission. 
But this does not mean that we will walk or let them walk all over us. For a time, Elohim holds. They stay their hand. But mark my words, the days are coming that God, the Father, Jesus Christ, and all of Elohim will begin to preach their sermons. And instead of them swearing like you heard me swear, they will curse this land and bring hailstorms, thunderings, lightnings, floods, earthquakes, tornadoes, tsunamis, the likes of which have not been seen on this planet for eons. The cleansing is coming. Who's on the Lord's side who? The cleansing is coming. So make your videos. Make fun of me. Do whatever you want to do because I believe in agency and exposing the energy is part of what I made covenants with God to do. Because see, those all seeing eyes not the one that Lucifer claims to have, but the actual members of the light forces. Give every opportunity for every human being to let their true energy play out. Because we believe in agency. We fight for agency every day. And we want to unite the family in every level, layer, realm, and dimension, we want to bring people home. Every species gathered into Father's family, whether through spiritual birthright and lineage or adopted in, everyone has that birthright. Not the bullshit that the Mormons teach, that certain races are better than another or certain family lines are better than another. That's bullshit. We believe everyone can be adopted into the lineage and we want you to come home. No one is better than anyone else on this planet or in this galaxy universe. We do have different bloodlines, different difficulties that have come with those bloodlines, obstacles to overcome, cultural differences. We all have imperfections in our bloodlines. I have been born into every single bloodline that's ever been on this planet. I have memory of it. This has been confirmed to me by Elohim in my communications and in my travels. You may choose to believe or reject. It will not change the outcome for me. It may choose the outcome for you. But in the end, I know that there is no end. There is no beginning. It's not like, you know, we have a deadline and the earth is going to end. Because that's another lie, the end of the world. In the King James Version of the Bible, it says, end of the world. That is a mistranslation purposely put in there by corrupt individuals seeking power. Translate that into a new time, a new age, a new welcoming, a new opportunity. Christ will return to this planet in the new age. The Davidic servant and servants, because there are many, are going to rise. There will be many that will go from a telestial sphere to a terrestrial sphere. Elohim wants to help with this. 
and every individual has to do their part. I also want to put this out here because people have called me a hypocrite for being on social media because I said, get the fuck off your social media. Um, I don't think there's anything wrong with being on social media in general. It's just the people that get on there and waste their days away doing nothing else productive on the planet and criticizing other people and judging other people and picking other people apart and looking at porn or whatever else, okay? It's all about the intent that you have when you do any action. And there is a lot of good that can be done in social media. But I also want this to be known. I have a staff that handles my social media. I don't even know my logins and passwords for any of my social media because I am too busy doing other things that are more productive that I need to put my time and energy into for my mission and my life. So those of you that are commenting online, I can hear and see and vision some of what you're commenting. The Lord will tell me and it's like, yeah, okay. And every couple of weeks, one of my staff member will tell me about like a creepy guy or somebody that's stalking me. But other than that, when it comes to me, your negative energy there falls on deaf ears. You're wasting your time on my pages, trolling my pages. Although I know you're trying to get like other people on board and just cause chaos. But if your target audience is me, you're failing. I don't listen. And the few things that I do here that they let me know of, it just, it just motivates me to, um, it's like a teacher, you know, or a parent or however you want to look at this. Um, you try to teach, like I have a teaching license, so this is where I'm getting this from, right? You try to teach your class the best you can with the modules or other things that you can use to teach. And if you're administering tests correctly, the test is not to see if the student's going to fail or pass or how good they're going to get. The point of a test, an evaluation, is to see where the teacher needs to improve in their teaching. So that's where I use your negative comments to motivate me because it lets me know that I have room for improvement in my communication with the entire spectrum. I'm not a teacher that wants to fail students or favor other students. I'm not a teacher that gives this, this uh, information in hopes even that everyone will accept it. I know they won't. I'm a teacher that is doing the best she can to raise a warning, to wake you up. Because whether you're consciously aware of it or not, even if you just hear my name, it's a trigger name. It will wake up part of your soul, wake up part of your spirit. Now it might wake you up to darkness, and I'm willing to accept that and take those chances. But in the hopes that it will wake you up to further light and knowledge, it's worth it. So wake up out of your comas. Get up out of your deep sleeps. Take your blinders off and your earmuffs. Take the dark caps that are positioned on your crown chakras, the dark clothing that's been placed on you in spirit realm, the negative cords, strings, ties, ropes, and chains that bind you down. Tear those out, cut them off, and set yourself free. Because many of you are walking around in these bodies so detached from reality that you think I'm the crazy one. And what is wrong with a planet 
who willingly goes and gets the chip, willingly goes and gets the vaccine, willingly wears a mask, and there's no reason to get it unless you want to die. But I can offer healing through conversation, through language, through emotion, and alternative health care that has worked for me to clear my Lyme disease and half a dozen autoimmunes. If you knew me in 2004 and had seen the struggles I had, you would know the miracles that have occurred for me as a result of energy work. And you would know that any organization like the LDS Church that condemns it and forbids you from using it is a corrupt system. Just one example. Take a look at the picture of the LDS Apostles sitting in front of the idol statues at the Rome LDS Temple. Pay attention to their body language, their hand signals. It's Luciferian. Their covert actions, hidden in plain sight, right along with the Catholics. And who is she, you say, to call them out? Well, I'll tell you, I am an ex-Mormon. I was raised in it. I know the religion. But I also know the Catholic religion because I've been Mormon in three probations, Catholic in a half a dozen, Jewish in half a dozen, Islamic, and Hindu, as well as Native American, different tribes. I'm familiar with religion. Hmm. Well, I think once again, I've given you sufficient ammunition. So how about it? For those of you that would like to learn more, I'll see you on Friday night, July 9th. Go to wasatchwakeup.com. That's W-A-S-A-T-C-H, wakeup.com to register. My name is Julie Rowe. I am 48. I will be 49 in January. I am a mother of three. And I just want to help. And if you still can't see that, and you still can't hear that, and you still can't feel that, then my heart hurts even more for you. On a planet, in a galaxy, in a universe full of so much dark energy and chaos, it is difficult to know what to do, who to listen to, and who to trust. You will not find it in Washington. You will not find it in Buckingham Palace. You will not find it in Salt Lake. And you definitely won't find it in Switzerland. That's my little shout out to the Luciferians who have their headquarters there that like to keep sending me threatening messages. Sending you boys lots of love. I aim to be your biggest enemy. And figure what the likes of it, the way it looks going into the future in the next decade or two, and as I look about 50 to 100 years into the millennium, I'll be spot on. So keep trolling my social media, helping me hone my gifts, 
so that when you appear with your picture as a woman, but I know you're a man or the other way around, or you try to act nice, but I can detect your wolf in sheep clothing or what have you, whatever, whatever technique you want to use, you reptilians and shapeshifters and others. Mark my words. We've got our eyes on you. The tiger eye and the Tiger Project is in full effect. And I'm not scared. Have a great day, guys.